Okie doke. So, chapter 10. Payroll. Um, payroll taxes, since you've all had payroll tax, a lot of this, most of this, almost all of this, I, I don't want to say absolutely all of it, but I'm pretty sure all of this is going to be review for most of you. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how payroll taxes and the Form 1040 are, how they work together, which you should already know. So that withholding for payroll taxes, obviously that is being reported on the Form 1040. Probably a little bit more clear now because I, I talk about that in the payroll tax accounting class as well, that that information is then used on the 1040, but when you don't have any experience with the Form 1040, it's kind of hard to conceptualize, but now you guys can, can conceptualize that. Um, income tax withholding, our favorite, uh, our favorite topic, income tax withholding. We don't go through the old method of calculating withholding, but as you recall, there are, so we had a change in how, we had a change in the W-4 form from pre-2019 to post-2019. Um, and Mariah, you had a you had payroll tax accounting, didn't you? I had a section 15. What's that? I oh, you had this payroll, but you didn't take payroll tax accounting? No, well, that's next semester. Oh, okay. All right, well, but, but payroll certification yeah. review as well is yeah. covers all this stuff. Um, I always think it's so weird that that, that, that that class does not have a prerequisite. It's strange. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm like, I'm pretty sure one before the other would have been more helpful. Yes, so again, yes. It still worked out. Exactly. Um, so in this chapter, we don't, so for those of us who were doing, and I think for payroll certification review as well, we went over both methods, uh, the, the pre-2019 and the post-2019 methods of calculating income tax withholding. We only talk about the post-2019 method in this chapter. Um, you know, that, that other method, it's still used, but it's really so rare these days. It's, it's pretty much been grandfathered out. Um, but we will go through that, a reminder of, remember, the percentage method and the wage bracket method and, and all that fun stuff. But that's what I want, I'm sorry, not to mm -hmm. well, but that is what I wanted to ask before I just kept, I'm sorry, kept forgetting. Mm -hmm. um, I know with payroll, there was like a specific amount of the 15.3 or? The, the specific, say that again? The sp specific percentage. It was like 15.3% when you put. So that's the social security and Medicare, Medicare tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. I think we only went over that once. Like now it's not together in income tax. Does anyone separate the two? We only, uh, in one chapter this semester, we did 15.3. But we never used it. Right. The percentage for the rest of the semester. Mm -hmm. that? Right. So we're going to go through, because that's only for the 15.3 for this class. What we're really concerned with are those um, self employed individuals, because okay. that's where it's going to be calculated. So that's why we only saw it really in that chapter okay. we talk about it a lot in payroll because when you're working in payroll you're always having to calculate that social security and medicare tax whereas with income tax it's only in specific situations gotcha. with, with self-employed individuals um, but we will go through through that again remember there's a wage base for social security tax so it stops at a certain point um, that that wage base changes every year so probably the amount that i'm going to talk about is different from the amount that we talked about when you guys took payroll if it was if you took it prior to 2023 it would be a different amount um, Medicare taxes we're gonna go through that as well we're gonna have a reminder of the rules for reporting and paying those payroll taxes remember we've got two different schedules usually two different schedules for the reporting of those taxes and the actual payment of the taxes so just like with the form 1040 we only do that you know the 1040 once a year and essentially it's a reconciliation so whereas we're paying taxes all throughout the year through withholding it's sort of the same thing in most cases it's the same thing with the 941 those quarterly reports where we're filing the reports that they're just really being used as a reconciliation to reconcile what we owed to what we actually paid um, but we'll go through all of that again that form 941 um, self-employment taxes. So we may spend a little bit more time on the self-employment taxes here because we don't spend a whole lot of time on that in the payroll class because, like I said, if you're working in payroll, you're working with employees. So self-employment taxes don't really 
come into play, um, but we'll spend a little bit more time on calculating the self-employment taxes. Again, we'll review a little bit about unemployment taxes, uh, also taxes for household employees and Schedule H. Schedule H is what is reported for household employees. So th these are individuals who are considered to be employees based upon the nature of their work. Um, we're talking nannies, uh, housekeepers, if you're lucky enough, butlers and you know those those types of, of professions where you're individuals that are only working for one particular family, and if they earn over a certain amount um, from that family, then they're considered to be a household employee. So the family is the employer, but it's kind of weird, right? Because a family isn't going to file like those 941s and the 940 and all that stuff. They still have to report that, but they report it on their individual tax returns called the Schedule H. So we're going to go through that and show you how that, uh, how they report that. Uh, W-2s and W-3s, we'll do a little review of those, um, which you should be pretty familiar with now. Um, uh, supplemental wage payments, backup withholding, W-9, Estimated tape, yeah. So we'll go through um, all of these as well. Any questions before we get started? Mm -hmm. 